that foundation that you're trying to build. And can I tell you this? And this is honestly getting this truth. I've seen this all over the country. When people stand up and they participate, they become feared. They don't get worked around, they get worked with. And that's the strength of it. And that's your return on your vote and your participation is now you're counted and you're asked before they put a, a warehouse in your neighborhood. You're asked before they decide that they're going to uh, put, put a, a, a correctional facility in your backyard. You know, you, don't, don't get me wrong, it takes time to build that. It's not going to be overnight. But you do this and you do it collectively, you become so strong. And this message isn't just for Alliance City, because Alliance City is unique. And uh, th this is a, across the country that people need to understand this in all communities. You want to you want to see change? Start participating. Yeah. And you're going to see it firsthand because they're going to be knocking on your door asking you, what do you think about this? Yes, sir. I have to ask this question. Do you think this is ethical? Why don't you think it's political? Well, I don't want it to be uh, so... No, I'm sorry, was that your whole question? Did I cut you off? I want you to answer and I might have a follow-up. Sure. I think that because of my background, it could be pushed back that I'm only making these comments because it's political. And I, that's why I zeroed in on the law and I zeroed in on the Constitution. That this isn't political, because it truly is ethical. It may be political for, for Senator Palestino, that he may be trying to score some points with certain, certain uh, circles and, and certain crowds. You know, showing Atlantic City how it should be done, kind of thing. But for the, the citizens of Atlantic City, I don't see this as a political issue. Well, the Re Re Republicans have tried every trick in the book to take over. They're angry since Don Guardian lost. They don't <coughs> understand why he lost. So I think it is political. And I'm not depriving you of that. I'm saying, from my perspective, this is not a political uh, uh, discussion. This is one of ethics and the Constitution. I get what you're saying. I respect your opinion on that. But if we allow this to become a political discussion, it becomes dismissed. It becomes, oh, that's just politics. They, they, don't listen to that. And I don't want it to be dismissed when the law is clear and we could go across the board of statutes that says you cannot do what you're proposing to do. That's why people don't want it to happen. So you don't think he knows the law, really? That they don't know the law? I, I gotta ask you this, if if he knew the law, how could you Why write such a letter? Because they think they can get away with it. This is the way Republicans you know, Democrats are nice. Republicans are not. And I think we have to begin to think the way they do. They're vicious. Yeah, but Bill, I'm sorry. You know, when they no, no, go you, low, you go high. Let me just say Bill. Go lower. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. And, and not in defense of, of, of Republicans, but our state senator has not vetted this with the Republican caucus in the state. He has not even, as Mr. Alexander said, he's not even vetted it with the nonpartisan uh, legislative office. This is his foolishness that he, as Mr. Alexander said, he's putting it out there hoping he'll get some support and then springboard it there. So again, Republicans can speak for themselves as Democrats can, but there is no <coughs> Republican leader in New Jersey that signed off on this. And the Democrats, no. But the reason that the NACP takes our position is because, as Mr. Alexander said, it's a civil rights and a social justice issue. And that's where we take our position. If Mr. Palestina was a Democrat, we take the same position if he makes the same proposal. So I, I can't speak to his heart, but I can say that the reason that we're taking the position, the reason Mr. Alexander is here tonight, it's because this is a civil rights, social justice issue. And as soon as I saw it, I called him. I said, it appears to me as a layman that it's unconstitutional, it's illegal, and really, I, I, I say, y'all tell y'all this, don't put it in the notes, Angel. It's crazy. <laughs> so I, you know, I, it's crazy. But we have to take it seriously. Because he's a state senator. Yes, he is. Now, if he was Vince Palestino just sitting on the bar stool talking, uh, that's, all, that's okay. But he is a state senator, and he's our state senator. Yeah. Whether we voted for him or not, he's our state senator. That's right. So that's why we are taking our position. That's why we are taking it seriously. And last thing, let me say this. He, in addition to being ignorant, he is disrespectful. Yeah. 
because he wrote to our state president, Richard Smith, to try to have Richard Smith chastise me because I took a stand against his, uh, his bill that we still haven't presented. Brother Johnson's around here. here. Brother Johnson went to his office, called his office, representing another uh, civic association, asking for a copy of the bill, still hasn't got it. That's it called him twice, you're right. Called him twice, mm -hmm. still hasn't got it. So I think now he's sort of retreating, because first of all, he's not getting Republicans to support him. Yeah. Nobody's going to sign on to that bill. He's not getting rid of, really, if you think about it, he talked about the Stockton president. Stockton president's not going to sign on to that. Mm -hmm. Stockton president just got here. Yeah. And we got Days as our trustee, but Days will turn Stockton upside down for that happen. Reverend Days, our good friend. But uh, the Casino Association, which is suing us, am I right, Mr. President? That's right. Suing us for the road diet, they haven't come out in support of that. Atlantic Care, which we are partners with, that president just got here. He's only been here four or five months. He hasn't come out and said he wants to do that. And no one else is going to come out and support that kind of idea. That's why it's important for us to stand strong. It's important for us to say, no, you can't do this. It's important for us to, to make sure, and, 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 and Ms. Alexander's right, if you couch it as a political issue, I'm a Democratic elected official. People will, some of them will dismiss it because they say all politicians, they only want to lie in their own pockets. They want to get elected and reelected and dismiss it. But when you couch it as it's constitutional, and it's illegal, that's a whole different frame. Mm -hmm. Last thing I'll say, same thing with our brothers and sisters in the LGBTQ plus community. When they say gay marriage, a lot of people say, I don't know about that. But when they say marriage equality, mm -hmm. same thing. Right. Saying if people are consenting adults and they want to marry, marriage equality, different thing. So our, our framework has to be, in my mind, that this is an unconstitutional, illegal, anti-civil rights and social justice movement, and I think people will see that. And voter suppression. And voter suppression. Right. Voter suppression. I'm sorry. That, that's, no, no, you're spot on. Voter suppression is, is the, is the lead-off, right? Because they're, they're, he really is proposing in writing to the NAACP that you sign off on suppressing everybody's vote in Atlantic City. I mean, what outcome could you possibly expect? And so to the gentleman's point, I couldn't imagine why he wrote a letter like this, because the whole thing is a little bit out there, you know, and I'm, I'm, I'm being respectful, uh, and I'm, I'm giving him the benefit. I want to give him every bit of the benefit. I hope that uh, Senator Palestino, if doesn't hear this, this recording or read these articles, he calls uh, President Shabazz and says, let me come in and defend this. Mm -hmm. That would be great. Let me come in and defend this. I will sit in the audience and take copious notes and not say a word. Because <laughs> I want to hear what defense could you raise right. to sending a letter like this to the state NAACP complaining about the local NAACP because they dismissed your idea uh, because it is a non-starter. I would love to hear it, truthfully. Yes, sir. Has any other city ever had their council dismantled and reappointed? And does Senator Palestino, has he identified any other cities he would like to appoint their city councils? Well, that's a great question, right? Because the answer, I don't know about any other city. I can tell you he hasn't identified anything here. And if, if, if I were someone proposing an idea like this, I would say, just like we did in X, mm -hmm. we could do the same thing here. Here's the framework. Here's how it worked out. Here how, here's how it wasn't unethical. Here, how it wasn't a violation of Constitution or voter suppression. I would have addressed those concerns. That's right. Instead of saying, oh, I was dismissed outright. Um, and and I, I, I think that I, would, I don't understand why people don't think that this is, is uh, constitutional. You should lay out your case. Make your argument. Sell your point, and then step back and let people try to pick it apart. Here, he, he just puts this idea out there. Now he's taking offense because somebody said, "No, no, we're we're good. We we don't need this here." And he thought he was going to get support elsewhere. And they're like, "No, that's terrible." So I think that the the answer to your question more precisely, no, I'm not aware of that. No, he didn't lay it out in his letter, at least the one I have. And 
quite honestly, I can't even think of where he would turn for a reference to say, just like in town X, uh, I would have had the same type of framework. Okay. One more question. Sure. So just for clar clarification, the letter was, uh, that letter that you have was sent to the state NAACP? The letter is addressed to Mr. Richard Smith. T. Smith, President of NAACP New Jersey State uh, Conference. Thank you. And, and just for the record, two things. Uh, as of today, and I asked Brother Johnson this in, in the uh, executive committee, you still have not got a response. Am I correct, Brother Johnson? That is correct. Okay. And I, as an elected official and as President of NAACP, I have not got a response or a copy of what Senator Palestino had presented, <coughs> just, just for the record. So I don't want you to think that we're being and, and unfair. Time, uh, so yes, sir. The group I was representing was the Venice Park Civic Association. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah. But, but my, my point, you never still haven't got a, no, a letter, a phone call, or no response, correct? Yes, right. Okay. And that's, that's months ago. So I, I don't want anyone to think that we're not being fair or, uh, or to... Uh, Give Senator Palestino the uh, absolute chance. And the, uh, I'll give everybody a copy of the letter, too. I have them in my office. I'll make sure everybody gets a copy through Angel. The state president said three things I think you should realize. First of all, he basically said he agrees with us. Secondly, he said that Mr. Palestino should have called him first rather than write a letter and release it to the press. And then thirdly, he says that uh, the rights of people to vote has to be protected. I don't know how he thought that our state president, Tim, would overrule what a local leader said on civil rights and social justice. I don't get that. Uh, I, don't, yeah. I, I don't understand. The whole thing is a quagmire. Um, I, I will just say this, <laughs> that I wanted to make sure, and I, I, I know that um, Brother Shabazz asked me to come here, but I'm grateful because now you're armed. You have facts. You know, and if anybody wants this, the, a copy of, um, I'll leave it with the president. Um, the, the uh, laws, you can um, ask him for a copy of it and you can have it, but I suspect we're never going to hear about this again. Um, I really do. But if, if it should come up, you are armed. You know the law. You know the Constitution. Final questions? Anyone yes. has a question? Yes, sir. Has an answer question? Yes. Hello, I'm Jane Jans. I'm from the Senate Park uh, Civic Association. I'm also part of the NAACP. Uh, just like the president we're trying to get rid of, or I say ex president we're trying to get rid of, uh, Trump. We also, can someone uh, also try to get rid of the senator that, or state senator that, uh, that, that, that we have? Yeah, you vote. You vote. You know, people ask me all the time about term limits. I say voting is your term limit. And, and in this case, you communicate what your opposition is. Or, or better yet, with your your um, why you like a different candidate, and then you vote because voting someone out of office is easy, but then you can get a, a someone worse in their place. Make sure when you vote, you know who you're voting for. Do the research and make sure that person's aligned. They don't, you don't have to. I, I you know I'm I'm not in favor of one issue uh, uh, voting. Like I only vote with this person because they align with this. Make sure that they have things in there that you can agree with. You don't have to agree with everything, but the majority of the things. That's the person you're going to want. But vote, participate, spread the word, talk about it. You know, keep this alive, along with other issues. Yes, ma'am. Um, first of all, I want to thank you for coming out uh, yeah. and uh, talking with us because um, if we don't have these conversations, then we are not going to be prepared or understand what the um, damage can be until after it's done. But uh, to uh, anyone that has young people who are just coming out to vote, one of the things that you have to um, instill in them and allow them to understand is that the position that politicians take and the things that are important to them may be detrimental to, that, to the young person. And so uh, when you're voting, you're voting to um, for progress, not uh, to regress. And, and they need to understand how it impacts them because that's why they're not interested because they feel like 
uh, oh, what's the point in voting? It doesn't change anything. Right. But we have to start talking about the changes that can take place when these young people participate in the process because they don't see that. Right, and I think that that, that is a perfect segue into what the gentleman behind you just said. When you're looking for a candidate to vote for, make sure that they represent everybody. The young, the, the, the old, and everybody in between. Because the reality is that these, the, it's, you can be lazy with positions like this. Because you only have to, to appeal to one segment. Right. But if you want to really put the work in, try to appeal to everybody or a much larger segment. And then you really have to, to, to do your research, do your homework. You know, you don't want to overpromise and underdeliver. Mm -hmm. The reality is that being a, ser a, 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 a elected official is service. Yes, sir. You're serving the community. This doesn't serve a community. This serves okay. an interest. Yes, and that's why it's so important that when we look, as the gentleman said behind you, as we look for our candidates, we look for ones that serve everybody, mm -hmm. the entire community, even the people who don't vote for that person. Yes, sir. <laughs> um, 